ഹലോ എവ്രി വൺ ഇന്ന് നമ്മൾ ടൈപ്പ് ടു ആണ് നോക്കുന്നത് ടൈപ്പ് ടു ഡയബറ്റിസ് മെലറ്റസ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് വെരി കോമൺ എമങ് ദ മിഡിൽ ഏജ്ഡ് പീപ്പിൾ ആൻഡ് ഇൻ ദ ലേറ്റ് മിഡിൽ ഏജ്ഡ് പീപ്പിൾ സോ ഇതിൽ വരുന്ന ഒരു ബേസിക് മെറ്റബോളിക് ഡിഫക്റ്റ് എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് എയ്തർ ദർ ഇസ് എ ഡിലേഡ് ഇൻസുലിൻ സെക്രീഷൻ റിലേറ്റീവ് ടു ഗ്ലൂക്കോസ് ലോഡ് അതായത് വെനവ വി ഗെറ്റ് എ ഗ്ലൂക്കോസ് ലോഡ് വെനവ വി ഫീഡ് ഓൺ കാർബ്സ് ദെൻ അത്രയ്ക്ക് അനുസരിച്ച് അതിനോ അതിന് കോമ്പൻസേറ്റ് ചെയ്യുന്ന രീതിയിലുള്ള ഇൻസുലിൻ സെക്രീഷൻ ഇല്ലാതെ ആവുകയോ അതല്ലെങ്കിൽ വൈകി ഡിലേഡ് ആയിട്ട് സെക്രീറ്റ് ചെയ്യുകയോ ഓർ ദർ ഓർ ദ ടിഷ്യൂ ഇൻ ദർ ബോഡി ഇൻ ആർ ബോഡി ഇസ് അൺഏബിൾ ടു റെസ്പോണ്ട് ടു ഇൻസുലിൻ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾ ദ ഇൻസുലിൻ റെസിസ്റ്റൻസ് ഇൻസുലിൻ റിസെപ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ഉണ്ട് ഓരോ സെല്ലിൻ്റെ സർഫസിലും സോ ദോസ് ഇൻസുലിൻ റിസെപ്റ്റേഴ്സ് ആർ നോട്ട് റെസ്പോണ്ടിങ് ടു ദ ഇൻസുലിൻ സോ ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് കോൾ ദ ഇൻസുലിൻ റെസിസ്റ്റൻസ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് ദ മേജർ കോസ് ഓഫ് ടൈപ്പ് ടു ടൈപ്പ് ടു ഡയബറ്റിസ് മെലറ്റസ് ആൻഡ് the etiopathogenesis there are four uh, major etiologies in type 2 diabetes mellitus that is genetic predisposition if our family have if the family members have type 2 diabetes mellitus especially the father mother grandfather or the grandmother then the possibility of having diabetes type 2 diabetes mellitus in the middle age is higher and constitutional factors that we'll discuss in the following slide decreased insulin secretion and insulin resistance so genetic factors as i told you there is a 50 percentage of chance of getting diabetes mellitus if there is a family history of diabetes mellitus and constitutional factors like obesity hypertension advanced age and low physical activity these all contribute to insulin resistance and decreased insulin secretion insulin resistance are major mainly due to the receptor defects in the tissues or there is a impaired glucose utilization in the body receptor defect means the receptor does not respond to the insulin impaired glucose utilization means either we don't work at all so that the excess of glucose or glucose is not utilized properly in the cells and the decreased insulin secretion also accounts for diabetes mellitus so these all factors will contribute to increased glucose synthesis in the body increased glucose synthesis in the sense if the cells cannot utilize glucose then they utilize the non carbohydrate sources proteins and the fat for producing the atp so there they have that is called the gluconeogenesis so the glucose will be secreted or be synthesized from other carbohydrate non carbohydrate sources so that all end up in increased blood sugar level in the uh, increased blood sugar level so that's called the hyperglycemia so the constant or the prolonged increase in the uh, of glucose in the blood that accounts for the type 2 diabetes mellitus so if there is a if the if we for example if we are obese then there is a chronic exposure of our body cell to the insulin so that the insulin receptor will not respond or they will get desensitized okay they won't be sensitive anymore towards insulin okay so they so that the glucose will not enter in, inside the cell and this thing is compensated by the pancreas by producing more and more insulin so if the cell do not respond to the insulin then the pancreas will compensate by producing more insulin but that actually fails so the failure of the beta cells to meet the requirement of insulin in the body will result in the hyperglycemia and that end up in getting type 2 diabetes mellitus and their complications so what are the clinical features clinical features are mainly uh, those are similar to those of a type 1 diabetes mellitus like polyuria polydipsia and uh, poly uh, phagia so the so i have repeated the polyuria here in this slide so that's polyphagia actually okay so unexplained weakness and loss of weight and also the frequently we will get obese uh, so the people will uh, with type type 2 diabetes mellitus will be obese and uh, and why there is a loss of weight means the fat bra- breakdown will be there so and also the onset of uh, symptoms are very slow and it may take years sometimes the people actually go for a health check up getting done and that time only the person can diagnose they are having a di- diabetes mellitus by checking their random blood sugar or their fasting blood sugar or their ppbg that is prospan- uh, postprandial blood sugar level 
what are the long term complications of the diabetes mellitus type 2 so there are a lot of complication that occur in the blood vessel level that is in the vascular level and the metabolic level and the immune level vascular level that is the blood vessel level means it can affect small blood vessels and it can affect the large blood vessel too okay so the small blood vessel that is a microvascular complications are mainly the neuropathy nephropathy and retinopathy neuropathy means that affects the neurons that makes a person to have lesser sensation of pain touch etc nephropathy means they have kidney disease that mainly uh, makes them to eliminate protein and glucose through urine that is called the protein urea and glucose urea retinopathy retinopathy means there is a altered that is there is an abnormality in the vasculature of the eye so that the retina will get damaged and there is a problem with the vision that is called the retinopathy uh commonly there is uh, the metabolites of the glucose like sorbitol and all will deposit in the blood vessel so that causes the blockage in the retina and cause the abnormality in the vision macrovascular complications are mainly due to atherosclerosis that is thickening and scarring of the blood vessels may large blood vessels so that actually end up in getting infarcts in the blood vessels in the heart brain and bowel in heart it mainly cause the cardiomyopathy cardiomyopathy means the disease condition or the damage to the muscles in the heart cardiac muscles okay and in fact in the brain that mainly causes the stroke in fact in the bowel that is intestine that causes the gastroparesis gastroparesis means movement of the git will be lowered so the patient will get flatulence or uh, abdominal pain etc yeah and improper digestion and all so and also gangrene in the extremity that is called the diabetic foot ulcerations will be there in the leg or in the foot that is called the gangrene okay uh, that is mainly due to the damage in the nerve endings in the foot or the palms uh, mainly in the foot so that causes the ulceration in the foot and also Uh, the infection above that ulceration that make complicated ulceration or gangrene okay so that's called the diabetic foot so importantly you have to remember five thing neuropathy nephropathy retinopathy cardio cardiomyopathy and diabetic foot okay the five thing you have to remember <clears throat> when you hear about the long term complications of the type 2 diabetes mellitus and the getting the chance of getting diabetic ketoacidosis is very low in di- type 2 diabetes mellitus while compared to type 1 diabetes mellitus okay because there is a glucose availability or there is a insulin availability in the blood while well, comparing to type 1 there is a uh, where there is a complete lack of insulin okay so metabolic complications mainly include the sorbitol due to accumulation of the sorbitol in the blood vessels that mainly causes the that mainly deposits in the aorta lens of the eye that uh, and kidneys and the nerves in aorta the sorbitol accumulation will cause major occlusions and in lens that will get cataract have you heard about cataract it is thimiram in malayalam yeah and also and nerves so when there is a damage in the nerves the patient will be unable to uh, sense the pain okay and protein glycosylation protein glycosylation that mainly causes the bone marrow uh, thickening and that causes the neuropathy nephropathy and uh, retinopathy yeah and then the immune complications are immune system complications are defective cell mediated immunity the defective cell mediated immunity that mainly makes an individual to get infections that is very important okay to get infections that mainly causes tuberculosis that is that mainly predisposes an individual to get tuberculosis uti pneumonia and all uti means urinary tract infection okay because where there is an accumulation of glucose in the urine or in the urinary bladder there is a chance of getting uh the bacterial infections there because the bacteria can easily grow up in the glucose culture yeah that acts as a media for bacterial growth 
yeah and defect in the uh, pmn function that is polymorphonuclear neutrophils neutrophils that also causes the infections like fungal infection candida albicans and all and also the bacterial infection in the blood so that the diabetic per persons are more prone to get infections in their body easily okay so these are the long term complications of type 2 diabetes mellitus so these are the thing you have to learn about the diabetes mellitus so that's all for the day and uh, thank you so much if you have doubt please text me let me know okay so thank you